Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the Gems of War Festival of the Sun event in which the Child of Summer is added to the game. So this also marks the second week of us getting, or yeah, the second event week, the second month of it, of us getting the uh, World Lore event, which is that new one that ends up bringing in those seasons. Uh, do keep in mind all the medals from it will still transfer over to seasons. And this is the last hero class we're ever going to be getting this week, uh, this uh, Friday is uh, going to be here, class event week, a new one, but is likely to be our last one for quite some time, and the event will likely be changed over with, like, raids or uh, Tower of Doom or something into the future, uh, and then be, be replaced with another world lore event that will keep uh, occurring uh, twice every single month rather than just simply uh, once, as it currently is. But anyways, as far as Trial of Summer, its trait stone is rather useless. If you want to get more of this trait stone, you can simply just go to the uh, Pan's Veil faction of uh, Warrens. It gives you a bunch of arcane lights every single time you finish it. For whatever reason, it's the only faction in the entire game that has arcane on the very final battle, which basically devalues arcane lights completely. However, this troop is actually good, uh, it, it, despite its uh, trait stone not being so. It converts uh, brown gems to red and then conjures a firestorm. It is the first empower converter in the game that has a storm into its own color that it converts to. This is obviously going to be very powerful, uh, and it's also probably going to be used in some teams that are kind of already good. Uh, Yagwe Queen Titania, probably the main one that stands out, but uh, pretty much anything that needs a lot of red, since it will also have the uh, firestorm on it, which will allow it to uh, likely get an extra turn, or at least if nothing else, once it takes all of its red off in power, it's at least going to put more reds onto the board if you don't necessarily get more out of it. So overall, going to be really a great red man accumulator and uh, possibly a replacement for tapon in some various teams so definitely worth uh, considering uh, messing around with as there are a lot of really powerful red troops that you'll be able to uh, synergize it with fortunately it won't be able to be used for guild war day of course on red day but it will still be good overall uh, for feeding red mana other than that, as far as uh, things that we have for uh, extra stats, we do have 10% to all fae as well as 10% to all elementals, which has a little bit of overlap, not an excessively high amount. Uh, if you want to mess around with this troop this week, good week to do so, even though we just had a vault weekend last weekend, which is the greatest time to get glory. This is the second greatest time to get glory, in which case you could just run this into your team in PvP, run it with like Yagwe Queen Titania, and uh, get a lot of bunch of quick kills for some free extra glory. So if you're going to be messing around with it, which we'll likely be doing a little bit on stream throughout the week, uh, we'll at least be getting some extra glory for it while we're uh, testing around if nothing else as far as the event key drop table it is worth considering this week it is for that of uh, bright forest bright forest has a few uh, pretty good options just go under bright forest and click show all we'll end up bringing you here and uh, here's everything that's obtainable the only five things that are not obtainable that are shown here are the doom of nature which is only obtained from green doom and the four faction troops that are from sunken fleet which are only from throwing shards at the sunken fleet portal everything else that you see here is available in the event key drop table the most noteworthy ones are things like Leprechaun, which has been meta for like a year and a half now since the day it came out. It's been very good and power into a bunch of man accumulation. Plus, you get some free gold on top of it. Really insanely good value. Uh, the new troop itself, of course, you can just get this off of glory. However, you can get some free copies that will save you some glory off of just, especially since the arcane trait stone is pretty bad, simply off of just using event keys. So if you are going to be opening event keys this week, probably worth opening up event keys before doing your glory, though it's not too big a deal if you do it the other way around. Uh, other than that, Glitter Claw, not the greatest of options. However, it does have a four times fairy fire off of ability that can extra turn. It is situationally good, though it's uh, very, very very, very situational. Uh, other than that, probably the most noteworthy thing that you can get within the drop table is Queen Titania. She has uh, probably the greatest amount of increase if you were to ever fully metal her to the amount of damage that she ends up doing. Because not only does she have a full AoE so that her 6 magic that she gains when being fully metaled uh, will end up giving her 24 damage, she also gets 50% additional damage assuming the entire enemy team is fairy fired, meaning she could theoretically get around 36 additional damage for being fully metaled, which is the highest amount of total cast damage any troop gains in the entire game from being fully metaled, if I am not mistaken. So uh, yeah, it gains a lot of value, <laughs> to say the least. So uh, Definitely uh, worth considering. It's obviously used with Yagwe Queen Itani as one of the main combinations. However, it can be put on any team that has a lot of red just simply to get a full free uh, AoE damage. You normally want to use it with one other option just because, uh, of course, Submerge and stuff can get in the way. But overall, really good. And that's pretty much it, unless you want to get Suna for upgrading the uh, kingdom. She's basically a weaker version of Queen Atania in uh, most situations, so you just tend to use Queen Atania instead. Uh, but yeah, definitely worth considering if you don't have uh, the Leprechaun yet, 
or if you don't have Queen of Tanya to open some event keys. Those are the main two instances where you would do it. Uh, if you needed more copies of Leprechaun, if you somehow don't have a first copy of Leprechaun, definitely 100% open some event keys. Uh, you could probably get them in about 10 or 20. And uh, um, other option would be at least go up to Queen of Tanya if you can, as uh, she's a really good mythic and one of the few, or sorry, a very good legend. And she's one of the few legends where you would uh, end up going for her with diamonds even if you happen to not have her. So you might as well save some diamonds and try getting her off of event keys right now if you happen to still be uh, missing her or if you just want to get her up. Upgraded, of course, to uh, Mythic, also worth considering, as she does gain a little bit of extra damage that way as well. Anyways, as far as the Festival of the Sun, this is, of course, the World Lore event for this uh, week. As far as the World Lore event, we get to find a bunch of eggs, kind of festive for right after Easter. Uh, Ten ed points for the Fairy Dragon eggs and four for the Sparks. Basically how this works is it's a lot more consistently scoring than it was last time. Last time it was a bunch of random numbers and you could end up increasing a lot more if you just spammed a bunch of battles with like one person rather than a bunch of people doing some battles. And it was kind of a bit of a mess, but they have rescaled it. It changed it up a little bit. And now as far as how this event is set up, uh, you will get four points for doing one of these imp blue imp battles, which unfortunately is all my battles right now. You will get 14 points for doing a blue egg battle, which is this exact color, but there's eggs, and all the rest of them are also egg-shaped. Uh, the um, a purple one will end up giving you uh, 20 points, or 24 points, uh, two eggs and four of the sparks, and then you'll end up getting 34 points for two of the different orange ones, which are, of course, the, just the rarity. The two oranges are the legendary, the epic, uh, the uh, purple is the epic, and these blue are ultra rares. So basically, you want to avoid these imps as much as possible, which is why I have all imp battles right now, because that will end up happening eventually. You'll be forced to have to take an imp battle. These give the least, and the ones you want to be going for the most are the uh, blue eggs, the uh, purple eggs, and the orange eggs. Ideally, having highest priority on orange eggs, second highest priority on two uh, purple eggs, and then the third onto the blue eggs, with the imps being, of course, the absolute last. Uh, where the current team we're using is this one, though I will be showing some uh, slightly uh, cheaper teams. Oh yeah, also, it did just warn me that we weren't using our uh, metal. Uh, actually, I probably should just switch to that right now, though we're low enough that it shouldn't really matter that we don't have the metal. But, uh, of course, we do have a metal this week. It gives 160% extra cast damage, which is obviously very strong. I'm not going to end up needing it here because this battle is a little bit weaker. Uh, though it does look like it makes it so we don't get the kill there, which is a little bit unfortunate. But uh, let's go get our explosion there and just get a uh, Dawnbringer down and Queen of Tanya. And, of course, Queen of Tanya's 50% extra damage does stack with that other extra damage that you uh, get off the metal. But that is the metal of the time. And right here, we got only four points for that. However, if we do this point, uh, one, which we'll go do it in a moment, just a quick kill it, uh, we'll go do it with this metal. So, of course, uh, these metals, uh, basically, there are three different type of metals that can occur during these uh, uh, during these events. They are the ones that do pure skull damage, like the one we got last time, the one that does pure spell damage, like the one we got this time, and another one that we might get le next time, which does a bit of both skull damage and spell damage. Uh, all of the three of these will convert over to seasons at the end of the event, so even though this is a different token, it will still convert to a uh, token of seasons, just like the other one did. So at the end of this event, if you have like uh, nine of these, or you know, let's just say two full medals, uh, those would convert over to two full medals of seasons, so do be mindful of that. They will not convert into some kind of other token, they'll simply convert over to seasons. So you might not necessarily need as many of them as you did on the previous event. The event in general is also a lot easier to complete than it was the previous time as they have rescaled it. And uh, you should be able to get it more in line with how you complete out other events. If you complete out other events in about three or four days, this will probably take about three or four days. If you normally get it in about six days, it will probably take around six days, so on and so forth. It should take about as much relative to how much you spent. And as far as how far I went, I personally went up to tier three. Uh, there's no actual weapon here this time. Uh, but I figured I'd just do tier 3 to help out the guild. That's also where you still get better value for the amount of tokens that you get. Since on the very first one, it's only uh, 30 per token. On this next one, I believe it was 35. And then on this one, it was around... Um uh, something around 50, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it might be exactly 50. And um, they, they were relatively cheap, and then they start going up and up. Uh, this one was almost at, uh, like, 80 or whatever it is, a little over 80. And it just keeps going up and up from there as far as how much each specific um, token will end up costing you. But I fig figured Tier 3 would kind of end up working out pretty well. Uh, no new uh, content here, though, specifically. I guess technically the metal's new, but it converts over to something after the event that isn't new. So really nothing new that ends up coming in other than, you know, the little portraits and other things. We could just get that at a later time for a small amount of gems. But anyways, let's do this battle again. Uh, this one will, uh, let me make sure I actually go use the bonuses though. So let me go switch over to our uh, bonus section. So I still only have uh, one of them at the moment, but we're running with 20% mana start, four extra magic, and the 160% extra damage. It's only one metal. And uh, let's go ahead back over to the event and go show that we get 34 points for this thing. So yeah, they do a lot more consistently score um, in line with um, 
consistency. Uh, like, this has a lot higher consistency than it did uh, last time, where you could even have multi-way ties, assuming your guild has the exact same amount of battles uh, compared to each other, as long as you don't lose any Vow Ravens or lose any battles. But here, uh, what we ideally want to look for is search for that Queen of Tanya, get that down, throw Dawnbringer, and then win. As you can see there, with 160% additional damage, we very easily win. And as you can see, this gives us exactly 34 points, and doesn't matter if we're doing this at level 20 or level 200 or level 500. Whatever level it goes to, we will still be getting this exact same 34 points for doing this orange battle so we got four for the little imp we got 34 for that and if we did any of these imps again we'd get four again and that's basically how this gets scored and you just keep doing this whenever you're forced to do an imp just do an imp and then just keep taking the uh, higher ones as soon as they uh, uh, change out but that is essentially this event as far as what you need to worry about a lot easier than last time of course it comes with some lore that we uh, read a little bit earlier um, I don't know do you guys want me to read it during these videos too of course, these videos normally just go over uh, everything for the week, but I'll read them during these too, because eventually we're going to be having them almost every single week, eventually. But anyways, went over that, went over that. Uh, other things we have going on this week. Uh, today, uh, we have ourselves the faction event for the um, for the Deep Hive. Uh, this, of course, has the very, very decent legend of the bee that will be able to go and um, uh, kind of loop, kind of like uh, Truffle does. Uh, but yeah, Queen Beatrix is definitely worth uh, considering getting some copies of. Of course, you don't have to do it specifically during this event, but uh, definitely worth considering. I personally haven't been using many teams with her, but she is pretty much like Truffle, just slightly different. Uh, this Wednesday, we'll be getting the Sif Pet again, which is a bright forest bonus. Uh, this, uh, this Thursday, we have no event. However, that is because on Friday, we are getting a new class event and likely the last hero class that's ever coming into the game. So uh, do be mindful of that. Uh, we'll probably be going over it, getting it leveled, and uh, messing around with it on stream. And hopefully I'll have a video up a little bit before then, just kind of going over the hero class. Uh, because we'll probably just spend a couple thousand diamonds, or a couple thousand gems on it. Since it is the very last hero class, I might as well get it a little bit power leveled. But just one last time, since we'll never be dealing with it again after their fourth. Anyways, as far as um, Soulforge, uh, nothing really too interesting in Soulforge. Uh, Megavore is about the only okay uh, mythic currently available right now. The rest of them you'd pretty much just get for if you need a kingdom upgrade. And overall, I would pretty much just skip on Soulforge this week. But Megavore does have a full armor tier to all enemies, as well as a pretty good single damage, uh, single target true damage. It also has a really random instant kill. The biggest issue, issue with it is two things. One is its instant kill chance is very, very low and inconsistent. And the other thing is that it eliminates all armor, which is not necessarily a good thing in some situations. There are a lot of really good weapons that upscale throughout the game that do require armor on the opposing team. And uh, this thing ends up getting rid of all of them. And while there are teams that do benefit from this, it overall actually isn't that good in most situations. So do be careful with it. Uh, overall, it's it's a worth considering. It's not really that meta, I would say, in the current state of the game. But it could be into the future. Uh, other than that, uh, Winter Imp and Gorgotha aren't horrible. Uh, Gorgotha being uh, one of the better tanks in the game still. With 75% reduction into cleanse into a, ma a mass amount of mana accumulation. And Winter Imp, if you haven't, got it, haven't gotten it yet, works pretty good for, for Vespera. Uh, also pretty good in some blue teams. Uh, it's a true damage imp. It actually gains the most amount of benefit of any imp because all the imps end up gaining eight magic on their color. However, this is the only one that does true damage, so it gains nearly like double the benefit of any other imp from gaining those additional magic. So worth considering. Also, you can't get it by any other means other than Soulforge, and if you don't get it now, it's probably going to be a while before it comes back again. Probably won't be in Soulforge again until like September or so, and uh, then it won't be in Drop Table until December and um, January, as far as uh, normal Glory Gem Guild and VIP chests are concerned since the imps run every two months but you can still get him in soulforge so he's right there if you want to get him not too big a deal if you don't but uh there are a few teams that do use him he's the only imp that is actually viable other than that as far as weapons this is the main thing that you should be worrying about this week uh if you do not currently have trickster shot do everything you can to get these resources by the end of this week uh these you can get through pet battles and the diamonds you can get pretty much naturally through dungeons uh but you might need to throw 50 gems on a couple of days to get a little bit of extra uh diamonds if you're a bit short but uh definitely worth considering getting trickster shot trickster shot being one of the main like weapons that is dependent on armor as i was just mentioning with megavore uh but it eliminates all armors of an enemy and then deals some damage to them and then a boost ratio is based on uh magic uh or based on their armor that gives you magic uh it's at a three to one so if you tier 90 armor you'll gain 30 magic it's uh, basically main but for magic essentially uh it's very situational when you would end up using this as you generally have to cast it twice before it could start one shotting however that is strategic against some teams uh it's also very beneficial for the current event as you can cast it once and then after that one cast everything you do uh, subsequently you should be able to one shot everything on the opposing team 
Uh, overall, it's a decent weapon, definitely above average. Uh, not the absolute greatest in the game, but definitely a utility that is worth considering having. Uh, other than that, if you're looking for something else for the event week, if you already have Trickster Shot, uh, getting this might not be too bad of a deal. Uh, it's a the Bright Forest weapon. It is the boost ratio you're restricted in the current World Lore event to have to use Bright Forest troops. So being able to use this to be able to accumulate a bunch of green and red mana, which is something that they use a lot of, will be very beneficial. So something worth considering, since you're pretty much restricted to pure uh, Bright Forest anyways, except for your hero. However, you can set your hero to it as well. And other than that, for today only on this Tuesday faction event, you do have the Honey Dipper. It's not really that good of a weapon. However, you can end up getting it if you so choose for completionist purposes you can also get it from the uh uh the hive event today if you want to go get it through gems that way instead rather than crafting in soul forge if you're looking to craft something else that isn't here and that's basically it as far as soul forge is concerned other than that just wanted to show a few teams before we uh, end up ending off so uh of course for the uh world event uh this was the one that i ended up showing earlier all of these are also in the comment section below as well as the description if any of you just want to go and copy paste them as usual uh but we have this same thing that we we're just using um dawnbringer child of summer queen of tanya leprechaun is up working out pretty well haven't had any issue with it yet if you're just doing uh, up to about tier three or tier four you should be able to run this the entire time without necessarily needing to change your team uh next up we have a uh, mid rarity uh team uh, this ends up using uh, Summer Aegis with uh, Queen of Tanya, Glitter Claw, and Child of Summer. Glitter Claw is for the consistent Fairy Fire, and uh, then you just use Summer Aegis to uh, Queen of Tanya as your main damage source. And you can also have Child of Summer in order to get Queen of Tanya back up. Uh, you can also uh, potentially go for a double Queen of Tanya if you so choose. Uh, and other than that, if you're looking for something cheaper that doesn't require any legends, uh, you can end up getting Trickster Shot from the Soul Forge this week, and end up going with Summer Knight as a frontline tank, and then going with Double Leprechaun in order to mana generate for your team, which looks a Aside from its normal power, also has plus one green, which will help you get your trickster shot up at a much quicker rate, possibly even in two turns with how much mana you have, also from banner. So you can keep cycling your uh, trickster shot over and over and over and over again. If you do not have trickster shot, you can opt for an essence of evil instead, uh, which you get from 250 wins on for Plague Lord, though it is advised to do trickster shot for the specific event, due to the fact that if you have at least one medal, which is very likely, uh, one medal for the event, that will be 160% additional spell damage, and that is generally going to be enough for trickster shot after one cast to be able to go into one shot range and even if it isn't it'll definitely be able to after the following shot after that so uh definitely worth uh considering anyways that'll pretty much wrap it up for this event week if you still have any other questions feel free to leave it in the comment section below uh of course main other thing happening this week is the new hero class this friday which is likely to be the last hero class we get for quite some time similar to how we haven't gotten a new kingdom for like a, a year and a half uh we're about to have the same thing pretty much happen to classes unless they have something else planned in the very near future so we'll kind of have to see uh, what ends up happening with that also version 4.9 probably around the corner it seems like it's going to be around early may at this point maybe very very late april but it does seem like it is around the corner i believe last year they did it around late april so uh, given coronavirus might be a little bit later this year but definitely seems like by early uh, to mid may we will almost guarantee be having a uh, next patch so have to wait see i believe we'll know a lot more about that in about a week or so so uh, we'll have more info around uh, that time other than that uh, stay safe from the coronavirus and i will catch you guys later thank you all so so much for watching and have a wonderful week goodbye everyone